renaissance that has begun under Andrew Cuomo, something we see, we live, we breathe, we experience every day of the week is going to continue because we don't want to go backwards, folks. We want to take this state forward to greater heights than we've ever seen before. Renaissance here, I guess, eye of the beholder, and certainly Kathy Hochul, a relieved woman last night after she uh, edged out here um, her opponent, Lieutenant Governor's way, uh, race, Tim Wu, and that would have caused all sorts of headaches, as Dominic explained last night, on the ballot come November. But you got a lot of folks um, who are saying, what exactly went down last night here? Because the biggest headline was, Governor Cuomo won, but did he really win? Um, he beat Zephyr Teachout, no surprise there, but look at the margin. The governor at 62%, but more importantly, Zephyr Teachout, 34%. And we all said arbitrarily here, guys, here, that if he hit 30, or she hit 30, I should say, that that would be considered a win, even though uh, that was going to be the end, of, uh, the end of her in this election cycle. What does that say to you, Dom, um, that she ended up not only hitting 30, hitting 34, because forget about the long-term impact for, for Governor Cuomo. What it says right now about dissatisfaction on the left? Well, it, it says a decisive win for Mr. Cuomo. You can't ignore that. But it says the left he is not something happy. more, though. He well, wanted something uh, yeah, more. Of course, they, uh, all incumbents want to run the uh, he margin up. He expected something more. Right. He failed. He won big, but failed the game of expectations. It hurts him going forward in terms of a possible presidential uh, run in 2016. I've always contended that's non-existent anyway. Uh, he and his own hometown, meaning the governor, Governor Cuomo, of Mount Kisco in uh, Westchester County, he won by only 17 votes. So it, it, it's embarrassing. The governor, um, you, you know, may, maybe he'll learn a lesson out of this, but some of his policies, as far as the left, they just don't like it. That's the message, plain and simple. Um, Hoka winning, um, I think, probably even more significant for the governor than the margin um, uh, that he won or didn't win by. Uh, in that that would have been a major headache that he would have had to deal with come election day. And it would have had to make some very tough decisions as to who he was going to try and get off the ballot or whatever and how they were going to try and massage it. At the end of the day, what else stood out to you other than that Cuomo won, but just not by as much? Well, I don't think there's going to be any impact for November. I mean, I think Cuomo's pretty much a lock to still win the, the race against Rob Astorino. So let's not, let's not go out in the deep, off the deep end off this. Uh, I think... The progressive left was certainly making its voice heard yesterday, and this will have an impact going forward, I think, in the, de in the wider Democratic Party. There's a difference between the progressive Democrats and the corporatist Democrats, and Cuomo is certainly a corporate Democrat. Uh, Hillary Clinton is a corporate Democrat, and there is going to be blowback on the progressive left. I, my takeaway from last night is I think there will definitely be a, a liberal progressive challenger to Hillary Clinton come 2016. I think the progressive left is finding its voice slowly but surely and will begin to try to exert some influence on the Democratic Party. A couple other things. Um, yeah, three people under indictment that ran for re-election yesterday, and two of them won. Um, Interesting. Um, Malcolm Smith, um, my God, uh, not that he was ever the biggest star in New York politics, but he was a rising one at one point, and it ended for him. He was the Senate Majority Leader at one point. It might have been a short <laughs> time <laughs> uh, with your friend Pedro Espada, but, 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 you know, but we see him walking out of the courthouse there. You talk about bad luck. Yep. This guy lost to Leroy Comrie. Leroy Comrie was in the city council, uh, ran for Queensborough president. He's somebody that's a player. So Malcolm Smith didn't lose to nobody. But you talk about bad luck. He's lost his job, and he's got to go back for this criminal trial that's going to happen again. And so, you know, it's not a good year so far for Mr. Smith. No, but the IDC, and again, that's uh, more alphabet soup for the public here, but Jeff Klein and that group here that was that narrow little uh, group that kind of bridged the Democrats and the Republicans and worked pretty good they for the governor, got a lot Senate of stuff power done. from the Democrats to the Republicans, and he's the leader of that group. Albeit he, a name he only, won, yeah. He won, what, uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, a Democrat. The governor was more than happy to work with these guys. At the end of the day, he ran as a Democrat, and he is a Democrat. And, and, he, and, he, won and, his, and he won his primary. I just I wasn't sure what you were saying. He, he won his primary yesterday, and there were chants of IDC in the room when he, when he was greeting the crowd. I am more convinced today than I was yesterday that if there's four or five IDC members in the state Senate and the margin is four or three, 
to the Democrats, he would be happy to pull the same deal again, get back in bed with the Republicans and pull that same power agreement. It's going to be interesting between now and November. I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. I don't see a way that Astorino wins unless this Moreland thing blows up for the governor, so he wins. But where the party is right now, not just in the state, but I think some people are paying attention nationally to what happened. I, I don't see where progressives have really where to go. But Richard, but that first trap door is already in line for Governor Cuomo for the general election. Uh, WABC Television, along with the League of Women Voters, Univision, I believe, and some others, they have already gotten together and s announced we want to hold a debate in October. Those are powerful media forces. There is no way the governor can say no, but we'll see what There'll happens. There'll be one debate with everybody on stage, just right, like it was four right, years ago. Right, I agree with that. He just wants to hear the rent is too damn high, and he can get through an hour with right, it. Yes. Right, right. Okay, um, when we come back, everybody, thanks, guys. Um, we're going to talk about the other big story, not just of the day, but of the week or even of the last couple weeks, and that was uh, the Ray Rice story and the shocking video of him knocking his now wife unconscious in an elevator in Atlantic City has people taking a much closer look at the harrowing impacts of domestic violence. And after this break, we're going to be speaking to a survivor, what she has to say about the alarming video and those for an abusive relationship and those who feel very free to tell them what they should do in their situation. Stay with us.